This is KGW News at 11. One person is in critical condition this evening after being hit by a car in southeast Portland last night. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tim Gordon. The incident marks the 56th pedestrian crash in the Rose City. Police say the person was hit by a car at the intersection of Southeast 82nd Avenue and Crystal Springs. When officers got there, they found a person with life threatening injuries. Paramedics rushed the injured pedestrian to a hospital for treatment. The driver involved in the crash did stay at the scene, but anyone who may have seen that crash is asked to call Portland police. And police are investigating a high speed crash that sent two people to the hospital this afternoon with critical injuries. Police responded to a call of the crash on Southeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard under the Morrison Bridge. This is the car that officers found that had crashed into a pillar of the bridge. Police say both the driver and passenger have life threatening injuries. A community rally in Seattle honored John V. Condola. A uh, 23 year old was struck and killed by a Seattle police officer on his way to a call earlier this year. Now comments made by another officer about her death have sparked outrage. 100 members of the Indian and South Asian communities marched yesterday where Condola was hit and killed in January, calling for change and justice. This comes after controversial body cam footage was released about a week ago. In it, Seattle police officer Dan Otterer who serves as the vice president for the police union, made insensitive comments. She was a kid. That's all I can say. And it has triggered us in so many ways. You know, that laughter is evil. It is haunting. And it is, um, yeah, we, need, we just need uh, to take an action against this. Well, the Seattle mayor and police chief addressed the comments for the first time to Condola's family, extending their condolences and apologies, saying they want to ensure this never happens again. There is an ongoing investigation into the officer who made those comments. As for the officer that hit and killed Condola, he has not been criminally charged. Well, this weekend, Portland firefighters traveled to a Colorado Springs memorial honoring firefighters across North America who died fighting fires. One of those remembered was one of their own. Thousands attended the ceremony, but in Portland, a firefighter memorial continues to stand in disarray after it was recently vandalized. Thomas Schultz has the story. It's so incredibly painful uh, to have that disrespect to these memorials. A memorial honoring Portland firefighters who gave their lives stands carved up. A couple weeks ago, it was vandalized again, this time worse than usual. A dozen brass nameplates of Portland firefighters who gave their lives uprooted. It is tragedy. Names missing, limestone chipped, and lanterns shattered. Not only do firefighters say it disparages those who gave everything, it disrespects them, too. Because the fact is, when we go to work, um, we do take a lot of risk. And there's always, in the back of our minds, the possibility that we might be on Memorial Day. This weekend, they honored one of those memorials in Colorado and, unfortunately, added a plaque of one of their own. Lieutenant Jerry Richardson was a, a Portland firefighter. He was a trainer. He was an incredibly respected uh, firefighter, officer, and human being. One day they hope to honor Richardson here, though that day seems a far ways off with this memorial trashed and vandalized. Jerry Richardson's name has got to have a place where we can always visit him and where the city always remembers him. Richardson died a couple years ago of lung cancer, brought on, doctors say, by years of fighting fires. One day his name will be added to the David Campbell Memorial, which honors Portland's fire chief from more than a century ago. Though for now, their memories are tarnished. It is so frustrating, and we can do better. Can do better, like Portland citizens did a century ago, when they built the memorial to honor Campbell. This is a heritage site. This isn't just a memorial. So that Richardson and 74 other firefighters are not just honored 1,300 miles away, but here, at home. In Southwest Portland, Thomas Schultz, KGW News. And we are learning new details about a fire that broke out in a commercial building in Happy Valley yesterday morning. Fire officials announced today at a community meeting that the fire was probably set intentionally. The cause of this fire has been ruled as most probable as intentional. We do not have a adequate ignition source with this fire. Um, but based on past history um, and with the surrounding population within that area, 
um, we've come up with the conclusion that is probably intentional. So that fire started around 3.30 a.m. at Miles Fiberglass on Audie Road is an abandoned building there. Clackamas County officials also lifted the evacuation advisory today for residents in two nearby apartment buildings. Officials tested for asbestos in the area and while results won't be made available until later this week, they believe the risk level is low. No injuries were reported from the fire. The state medical examiner's office did confirm that a person found dead inside one of the apartments uh, during the evacuation had died before the fire broke out and is unrelated. Crews are working to clean up the debris in the area. A short term shelter is still available for tenants who were impacted by that fire. All right, Ashley Grams joins us in the studio with a look at your first forecast. Ashley, we saw a little cooler temperatures today to break our heat. How's the week ahead looking? Right, we did see much cooler temperatures. We've got a cold front here. We only made it up to 75 degrees, which compared to the day before 85, we dropped about 10 degrees right now over the Rose City, about 65 and still some cloud cover. We saw a lot of that cloud cover today, uh, just sweeping in from the coast all the way across the I-5 corridor. So if you didn't see the sun much today, you definitely aren't alone. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Going to be fairly similar, except for we're going to see a few more sun break. So if you were missing that, if you want to celebrate this last weekend of summer tomorrow, a good day to do it. We could see a couple showers here in the morning, uh, but those are going to be fairly light, not going to bring us too much measurable rain if we do see them. And then we're going to see a clearing here later on that Monday, 75 degrees at our latest point there during our daytime highs. Uh, but we do have a couple more days ahead that are going to be similar in temperature. We're going to sit here in the 70s for a bit and we are going to have another chance for rain. We'll talk more about that in your seven day forecast coming up, Tim. All right, Ashley, thanks a lot. You don't have to be the problem. You don't have to have the problem there. You can support others that are going through it. Well, dozens of people gathered today in Pioneer Courthouse Square to rally for Oregonians in recovery from addiction. Portland Walk for Recovery is organized by Oregon Recovers. This walk is part of a series of six walks happening across Oregon this month in light of National Recovery Month. It's a call to action on an emergency plan to end the addiction crisis in the state. People of all walks of life were there to raise awareness. You don't feel alone. That you notice that you're not fighting alone. That there's other people among you that they are fighting together with you to stay sober. Addiction has been declared a public health crisis in Oregon. The state has the second highest level of untreated addiction in the country, but ranks 50th in access to treatment. Well, the Portland Japanese Garden celebrates its 60th anniversary this year. Today, they held an all day celebration to showcase its rich history in the Rose City. Events included origami folding, a tea ceremony and special performances as well. And of course, visitors got to roam around to see all the beauty within the garden. So I think it's an honor for us to be part of this legacy, to provide the city of Portland and its visitors a place of serenity and great beauty. It's an honor that we get to work here and we're really excited for our future. Yeah, if you didn't get to join the celebration today, the Portland Japanese Garden, oh, it's so beautiful. It's open weekdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. except on Tuesdays. A recent study found that your personality can evolve as young as the age of three. China Green breaks down the data showing the differences between Spanish speaking Latino students and their English speaking classmates and how one group is more competitive before they even know how to read. So everybody's interested in sort of the social development of children. Sort of how is it that they become moral? A recent experiment done by Washington State University found Spanish-speaking Latino preschoolers were more likely to be more generous to others compared to their English-speaking peers who were found to be more competitive. Researchers came to this conclusion through game-based experiments with 265 children ranging ages 3 to 5 who were all enrolled in a Head Start preschool program. So we set up a game where we evaluated whether or not generosity versus equality to see how it is that they behaved in that. And so most of the you know data would suggest over time that they would be more generous. And in fact, they were. To break it down simply, the kids were given stickers and had to choose between everyone getting an equal amount, giving a classmate more stickers than they had, or keeping the stickers for themselves. 
the Spanish-speaking Latino children mostly chose the options that resulted in their classmates having as many stickers as possible, where the English-speaking children as a whole tended to pick the options that were either equal or benefited themselves. You know, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that different cultures differ in terms of how collectivistic they are or how individualistic they are. And the United States is a very individualistic country. So especially when we're dealing with families of Spanish-speaking children, it's very interesting to think about how it is that they're going to make this transition from a more collectivist, interdependent culture to a more independent, individualistic culture. Psychologists say they're interested in studying the preschool years because it's a time when children start to emerge from a self-centered focus to interact with others more socially, which, as this study shows, can also reveal their cultural values. What's next is getting to the root of those behaviors. It could be emerging in the preschool environment, or maybe they bring with them to the preschool environment these differences. That's probably the next step that we need to take. For KGW News, I'm China Green.